Hello and welcome to Jennifer Natters. I'm Jennifer, trying to remember to look at the camera and not at my own picture. I'm Jennifer and this is where I natter on about my crafty stuff, mostly knitting. Uh, I was going to say I think it's all knitting this week, but I do actually have one, one little project bag over here that I've sewn, which I will probably forget to tell you about anyway. So let's say it's pretty much all knitting. Today is the 15th of November. Hi, it's been a while. It's been what, like six months? I know in my last podcast, which was the end of September, I said we were going into half term, which probably meant I wouldn't have a chance to record a podcast. And it's been a couple of weeks since half term and I still hadn't recorded a podcast. I'd like to apologize at the oust. I do have a sore throat and a cough, so I will probably have to pause this video a lot to cough. I've been COVID tested to the PCR. I don't have it. It's just there's a really bad cough going around and now it is my turn. Um, and now my face is itching like everywhere. <sighs> Hi, how have you been? I hope you've been better than I have. I haven't been particularly terrible except for this cold and this cold is absolutely just been kicking my butt. So that's why I haven't podcasted in a while and I do now feel the urge to clear my throat. Hopefully I'll be able to go through and cut out all those things so that this is a more pleasant viewing experience. <laughs> ah, where to begin? Um, I didn't do one right after half term because I felt like I didn't have anything because as I'll mention in life stuff like we spent all of half term break with a cold my kids were coughing really badly. And I was, my husband was coughing really badly. I wasn't coughing really badly, but I had absolutely no brain. I felt completely exhausted and worn down and I had no energy. And then by the second week I was having really bad spells of brain fog where like I just could not think, like I'd go into the kitchen, I'd be like, why did I come in here? What was it I came in here to do? And I'd be like, actually like holding my head, trying to force the thoughts through my brain and that would give me headaches. It was it was not a great week. Um, and then, so when my kids did go back to school, I looked around, I'm like, I have nothing to show for my two weeks off. And now I have the cough, so it's even more fun. But we'll get to that in life stuff. We can start with what I'm wearing, which is the, is it the Lustrous Shawl? Yes, this is the Lustrous Shawl. I wrote down Lustrous for a yarning somewhere else. That's why I was confused, but that wasn't. I'll look that up in a second. This is the Lustrous Shawl by Noma Lovu. Uh, and she's bigger than life knits on like Instagram and social media places. It is an asymmetrical triangular shawl and a reversible cable. It is knit in Fiber Spates Vivacious DK in the color Spiced Plum. And I am also, you can't really see it, but I am wearing, I forgot to mention this a couple of weeks ago, well, a couple of podcasts ago when I had made it, but I am wearing a me made dress. It is the Billy dress by Tilly and the Buttons. It is a sweatshirt and sweatshirt dress. I love it. Um, I wanted to make mine a little longer, so I went with the shorter sleeve so I could put the fabric into the dress length. And the only thing I would change about it is I would do long sleeves. So I've ordered more fabric to make another one, and this time I've ordered extra fabric so I can both do the long sleeves and the added length. But I have, I have been living in this for um, like all weekends and days when I've been running and I come home and I'll take a shower and I'll put this on and it is just the coziest thing. It is like wearing a blanket. Um, I know people talk, so is talk about secret pajamas. This is secret blanket. Anyway, yeah, it's, it's good to be talking to myself again and all of you out there who are watching. I have really missed podcasting. I've also like every day I've been checking my list of podcasts and refreshing being like, oh, my favorite people haven't podcast in a long time. And then I'm like, well, what if I'm someone's favorite person and I haven't podcast in a long time? I'm like, well, I'm, I'm busy. I 
you know, I'm poorly, I can't, all these excuses. So I understand why they're not broadcasting. It's just, I'd be like, oh, disappointed every time I was clicking refresh on it. So hopefully someone out there is saying, yay, a fun podcast to watch. <sighs> I'm a bit, I'm a bit all over the place. Uh, finished objects. I actually, I have a couple to show you and a couple that I can't show you because I do not physically have them. Let's start with, this is a rainbow porty hat. It has not been blocked, but it has been worn a lot. Um, that's why I love the ends in. It is a new pattern by Isolde Teague, which is a ribbed version of the Marlberg hat. I think that's Musselberg hat. And I knit this in Rico cotton, long and light, light and long. It's a self-striping gradient and I made it in the regular adult size when it's on the hat. Doesn't look quite so pointy, except sometimes it does. Uh, I made it in the adult, the regular adult size. There's also an extra large adult and it has been claimed by my eight-year-old and she didn't take it off until today when she went to school and I went and found it for her and she says she didn't want to wear it but she's been wearing it a lot she has enjoyed wearing hats around the house my husband pretty much always wears a hat around the house and so now our oldest has started doing it as well I have as well because I am I've just been cold a lot and I think part of it has to do with this cold is just draining all my energy because of my asthma, when I get a cold like this, it really just settles into my lungs and I have the cough for the rest of the winter. So I kind of have to do it or not are my options really. Uh, but yeah, I love it. It's really soft. The, the cotton was kind of a chainette ply, so it was springy and easy to work with. I would actually buy more of this, but I looked online and I can't find it right now but it's not listed as discontinued. So maybe it's only available in the summers. Uh, yeah, she loves it. It's fun. I would knit more of these. I would also, I measured it and it was long enough. And then I did the bind off. Um, I did a tubular bind off and then I gave it, to my you know like I tried it on and it looked really short but it's for my eight-year-old so it doesn't need to be like it doesn't need to be as big but when I measured it again it was only 10 inches instead of 12 inches from the point so I don't know I was I must have stretched it out when I was measuring it or something it is not as long as it could be and I offered to take it back and undo the end and knit another two inches really but my eight-year-old says that will not be necessary it is so soft I love holding this it is so soft and it's really stretchy and springy and just I recommend the yarn if it's still available and I recommend the pattern it was fun I hadn't I have the Musselberg pattern but I haven't knit it yet so it starts, you cast on and then you follow the pattern for so long and then you measure to get your gauge. And then there's charts with gauge and size. Ooh, Libby's thinking about coming to join me. So then you match them up and follow those instructions for how to make the hat. Um, there we go. And then it's written to have a folded up brim if you want it, but for me, it's not long enough to have the folded up brim. Let's see if I can take this off without ruining all my curls. I tried really hard to have curls today. And then I went to blow dry my hair and couldn't find the, I found the blow dryer. Is the diffuser with it? It is not. I blame my children. That is the first one to show you. The second one is, oop, Libby has decided to leave again. The Erica hat by Wooly Wormhead. Again, this one is not washed. It's not, and I haven't woven the ends in on this because I don't love it. 
I knit this with the leftover yarn from my lustrous shawl and it's fine I mean it fits and it's cute and it looks like the pattern the problem is I was playing yarn chicken because it's it is the leftovers from the shawl this is how much I have left but I got to where you start doing the decreases and I realized I was not going to have enough yarn so I left out a lot of the rest rows there'd be decrease rows and then rows where you just knit and pattern and then decrease rows I left out a lot of the rest rows so the hat comes rather abruptly to the top and it's it's not tall enough it's completely my fault I mean I probably could have done at least one more rest row early on or like two further up but I didn't know how much yarn I was going to have I was worried about running out I didn't want to order another 115 gram skein just to put like three grams in the top of the hat so I've knit it and I've been wearing it a bunch but I just I mean it looks fine it really does it's just not quite what I thought I wanted so I'm thinking about ripping it out and knitting a different hat with the yarn but now that I see it on it looks it looks really cute I don't know thoughts opinions keep it rip it out and knit something else I possibly love more just accept that I love it and it's okay I don't know um, again, that is the Erica hat by Wooly Wormhead. I knit it out of the pattern in the book, but I do have the PDF. Oh, I have kind of screwed up my curls. Oh, well. If curls can't handle a hat on and off, then they really, they just can't live in my life. I'm almost done with my tea. I made a cup of tea and then I sat down to write out my notes for this. And I pretty much chunk all my tea. But I still have my water bottle for throat clearing needs. I'm just having some Tesco Earl Grey. It's fine. Uh, just checking my notes real quick. Oh, one more finished object to actually show you. And these are self-striping socks. They're actually self-spiraling socks rather than self-striping. These are pixie yarns in one of last year's ooh, Libby's back uh, 2020 Halloween colors Say hi. just a little chirp she said hi uh, they are very sparkly I don't know if you can see that and they're soft and squishy and I like them so that's convenient for me my little princess Libby is our princess I will I'll try to make sure she has a very model. She is the worst for showing everyone her bum. Don't do it. She is also not a cat who will just sit next to you. The other cat is a sit next to you cat. Libby is not. Do you want to, do you want to come here? Say hello. Show everyone your pretty face. Look up. Look up. She does not want to look up and show everyone her pretty face. She's got really pretty green eyes. Uh, but apparently that was an invitation to come sit in my lap. The other two finished objects are my husband's socks, uh, which I showed you one last week, one was done. And I think it's even the cover photo for the episode. So you don't even have to watch it. You can just look at it. They are a pair of Fab Funky Fibers socks uh, I think I yes the Moreland pattern which was September's a year of techniques confident knitting confident knitter a third year of techniques see I am just not ready for this they are the the September's pattern which is the Moreland socks by Jen Arnold Colorford who is of course the editor of the book in question and huge fab funky fibers enthusiast I used some black opal I think it is that I have in stashed for the heels cuffs and toes 
and I was going to knit them very long for my husband but he decided he'd actually just prefer regular sock length socks so I wrote back a bit and finished those for him and yeah hopefully I put in a picture and all that jazz uh, but I don't have those because he went on a business trip over half term it sounds very exciting but like that he went down to Glasgow to see the Great Tapestry. He went down to Glasgow and not Glasgow. He went down to Edinburgh and then got the train out the next day to see the Great Tapestry of Scotland, which has its own permanent exhibit. He is working on doing an interactive web page and interactive exhibits for a museum that's opening here in Inverness. So they have been traveling around to see what other people are doing and oop, she's now doing puddings in my lap I made that dress you be gentle yes so he he was going on this overnight business trip and he asked if he could have them to wear because I had finished them recently but I was holding on to them to tell you about them on the podcast so I let him have them. So they are now, they're his and I don't have them anymore. And he's probably wearing them today because I did look in his room to see if they were in the mucky sock drawer. He has a special, it's just a basket, but it slides in and out where the dirty socks go. And then I wash them and put them back in the clean socks. So they never go in the laundry. He doesn't accidentally felt them. Uh, yes, so that is the socks for my husband. And then I knit a, sorry, just checking my show notes again. I knit a beloved bonnet for my four-year-old. So hopefully I can put in a picture. I wound up blocking it on one of the Halloween balloons, which tickled me to no end, especially because I had just read uh, Gideon the Ninth and Harrow the Ninth, which is necromantic sword and sorcerers. So there are skeletons and fighting and oh, in space. It's necromantic, sword and sorcery in space. And a lot of the characters happen to be lesbians. People tend to say it's a lesbian necromancers, sword fighters in space. But to me, that implies a romance. And there's some people think there's a romance. I don't think there's anyway, different story for a different time amazing book I had such a book hangover after I finished that and the sequel Gideon no Harrow the Ninth is the second one such a book hangover where I just I couldn't get into anything else and I was just like listing around wishing I was still reading them uh but yes I I blocked it over a skeleton skull balloon from Halloween because when I tried to take pictures of my youngest wearing the hat it, Oldest kept trying to photobomb, so I wasn't able to get a clear picture. So there's the hat. And I can show you the yarn that I have left over. And this is Ripples Crafts Colkin DK in the colorway. I don't know. No, no, it's just people in the woods. Uh, this is the one where I wrote down the color was lustrous, which is the name of the shawl. Lush. The colorway is lush. And it is a bright neon pink with yellow and orangey speckles, which I thought would be good for her because she likes pink. And also they are currently doing nursery in the woods. Those are the woods. They do it just over that way, um, like 100 meters that way and so I she needed a nice warm hat and I thought a brightly colored hat would be better if one of my children is going to get lost in the woods because they ran off it will be this one um uh yes so those are my two finished objects that I don't have to show you while I have the bag in hand I made this with some Halloween fabric I made this with some Halloween fabric I got from Wool, Wool Warehouse uh, and the spider webs, the skulls, the stars, and the ghosts glow in the dark. Oh, and I think those stars as well. 
they glow in the dark, the bright white ones. And I also made face masks for the eight-year-old and I in this fabric, which I was fussy cutting to get the spider web to be, you know, right in the front. The only reason I made one for the eight-year-old was because I was trying out the pattern and I started with the medium size. It did not fit. It's the extra large that fits, but I will make more. They're really comfortable. It's the Japanese origami style mask. This is the Wee Bra bra, Wee Bra bag, which is a sewing pattern. I want to say by Allison someone. And I've actually knit, I've made two of them. I made this one over the summer and I liked it, but I wanted it a bit bigger. So this one, same pattern. I just made it, I added extra inches in the, the height. Um, and I think maybe one inch less would make this a really good sock or single skein project bag. Uh, it is fully reversible. There's a tin inside with sewing notions. I have been turning tins. That's the pretty side. I got this one from Knit Now Magazine, but these and like little Sweeties tins, Altoid tins if you're in the US, but you can't actually get Altoids in the UK, into, well, I've been using them as notions tins, but I've been adding a magnet to the inside lid. And then when I'm weaving in ends and stuff, I can also just clunk it to the outside and then you don't lose your needle like when you put it down to trim the the ends and then start the new one you're like where did I put the needle so yeah the needle sticks and then some of the metal stitch markers stitch but I've been making tons of these and by tons I mean like three with different size uh little sweeties tins that I have put that back in the corner. Um, this project bag has my next, is it my first? My first works in progress. Hello. I am really, really rusty at this. My first work in progress is the terrain mitt. It'll be plural when I knit the other one. And this is by Marceline Smith. These are the, it's Jamison Smith two ply color, two ply jumper weight. I had ordered, these are the October pattern for Confident Knitter, a year, a third year of techniques. The technique is mosaic stitches so it's slipping stitches to make the color work rather than stranded. I had ordered the alternate colorway kit for the month so that is or for the the season the three months and my modifications were that I knit longer thumb and finger ribbing cuffs so that I can bend them over if I want them shorter or if it's cold and you're walking around you don't need your fingers and then I tend to and sometimes I even make like a little sock puppet but you can have them longer for warmth or fold it over and be able to use your fingers. I did not particularly enjoy working on this. The, the mosaic knitting is fine I don't really like coral. I have a coat that's this kind of dark petrol color that these would look really well with, but I don't particularly care for coral. So I think these will be gift knitting. <clears throat> they're nice, they're cozy, they're comfortable. Like I like wearing them. I just didn't enjoy knitting them, which is probably why I'm not very far on the second one. That and all the hats. Ooh, I have a cough lozenge. 
with sucking on a cough lozenge make me less likely to cough and improve it? Or would it mean like my mouth would be all weird because I'm sucking on it? I don't know. So for now, we'll go without, but I think I'm going to start coughing again because that's just the way it is. I'd say that's just the way the world I got. I had to get a new phone. I had to get a new phone and so I got one of the the pop things and it's pandas and it says this is how I roll. I love it. That just came today. My phone broke last week like completely stopped turning on and it was an iPhone 5s and the new ones that are coming out are a 13. So it has been a while. I mean, I didn't. It was my husband's old phone when I got it. Um, so yeah, I've got a, now I've got a 12 mini. And this is like the newest, closest to current edition phone I've had in 12 years. I'm really excited about it. I'm looking forward to taking pictures that actually look good because they're high resolution like everyone else can take. So much fun I can have. Although setting it up absolutely killed an entire day for me. And I'm still just like, my husband has the same phone that he's had for a couple of months now and I keep going to him and I'm like, how do I do this thing that I used to be able to do on my iPhone and now I can't figure out how to do? And I'd be like, oh, you do it like this. I'm like, oh, because there's no instructions. It doesn't come with an instruction manual or anything. I've had to look up YouTube videos online and I don't know. It's just, it's just a lot. Uh, socks. Where, oh, where are this month's socks? This is another project bag I made for myself. Ta-da! This is fabric and based on a tutorial from a sewing class I did at the Wee Sewing Shop, which is here in Inverness, way before the pandemic times. Uh, and I modified it to have a handle and then have the draw have the drawstring here and have a clippy instead of being double pull. And the fabric for the handle would have been a taller thing. So when you pulled it close, it had a little ruffle at top. Modified it. It's basically not the same bag at all anymore. Uh, my current pair of socks are the Montclair sock by Kate Atherley, which is a free, she did it as a free pattern on Twitter last year, like last October. And I knit it then, but I also wrote the pattern down. It is now available as a paid pattern. Although obviously you could find the tweets on Twitter if you, you know, if you wanted them. This is Yuletide by Giddy Yarns which is a sparkly, self-striping, gobstopper um, ball. Giddy arms. Yuletide. And I am knitting. They're super stretchy and I cast on with 72 stitches so that these can be, I'm hoping to use the whole 100 grams. I don't have a contrast mini with it. Um, and make, if not knee socks, at least taller socks. And so it'll go over my calf. And then after a couple of inches, I think I will decrease away at least one repeat. Um, two repeats and then I will do 64 inches 64 stitches through the heel turn and for the foot I have barely worked on these because they are my out of the house knitting um, they should be my watching strictly knitting but I was working I wanted to finish the hats I really I was just knocking out some hats uh, so yes, but we haven't been leaving because epic colds and 
What's the other thing? COVID. We don't have it. The kids' school has it. So we didn't do anything last week because I figured if the school's closed because of COVID, then you probably shouldn't be like running around and mingling with kids from other schools because if you have it and you don't know it, like that. Just better not to. So the other one I'm almost done with. <clears throat> is my second love note. Doo -doo. I am doing long sleeves. This is the same color yarn as my first one, which is the pink by Old Maiden Aunt. And then I've paired it, last time I did it with the Fiber Spates Cumulus in the Ruby, and this is Rowan Kid Silk Haze and I think a discontinued color. Um, Rowan Kid Silk Haze does not agree with me. Though I did, when I, my hands were hurting because I was using it after I bought the yarn and like paid good money for this, I knit a swatch and washed it and I stuck it, you know, in my bra, um, under my bra strap and I wore it all day and didn't notice it at all. But knitting with it, it makes my hands hurt. And I don't really know how to, like I'm not coming out in a rash or anything, but my hands hurt holding the yarn. The other thing, I knit the oak and the body and I got to the rib and he switched to smaller needles for the rib. And I realized I knit the whole thing on the smaller needles. If I could move one eyebrow independent of the other, this is probably going to be my cover pick, isn't it? It won't be because I get to pick my cover pick, but yeah. I knit the whole thing on the smaller needle size. I'd also gone down a size because I knit the extra large to double XL or triple XL or the first time. And this time I thought I wanted something that was a little more fitted. So I knit the large, except because I went down a needle size as well. Excuse me. It's really fitted. It is like negative ease. It fits. It fits like a negative ease jumper, but the whole thing is negative ease, except the sleeves. So it's not quite what I wanted, but it'll be fine. But I finished the first sleeve and I went with um, wrist length sleeves. And then I went back and did the neckline and I added, I just wove in some white thread. I haven't trimmed the ends yet, but I wove in some white thread. So when I go to put it on, oh, that's the back. You can't see it. I mean, you know it's there, so you can probably see it a little, but. No one will be able to see it when I'm wearing it. I think I need about one inch more on the sleeve here and then the cuff. And then if I have any yarn left over, which is looking a bit dubious. Yeah. I have enough to finish the cuff. I'm not going to have enough to go back. I was hoping to add a little length to it. It will look fine as a crop jumper over a dress. I have a black dress with a full um, skater skirt that this will look really nice with. And I was planning on wearing it under dungarees. It is long enough to reach, you know, like into the dungarees. Shawl's falling off. Uh, so yeah, it'll, it'll function in my wardrobe. It's just not going to be the jumper I thought it was. Obviously this means I need to knit another one to be the jumper I wanted it to be, but not immediately. I would absolutely recommend this. It is very much a pullover. You can knit more than once and have different effects and they knit up really quick. So it's just fun that way. <sighs> Whoops. Last whip. Last work in progress. 
but you know, I was sitting there like, oh, I don't really want to do a podcast because I don't have anything to say. I haven't finished anything. My blanket. I have upgraded my blanket to a bigger bag. This one actually is a bit bigger. I made it and it would probably be okay if I went back and took off like three inches from the top. It would probably be a slightly better size and shape and I am definitely considering doing it eventually. It's on the list of things to fix. I have put in some time on my Marvelous Monthly Minis Habitation Throw, patterned by Helen Stewart, I think is her name, Giddy Yarns. This is the monthly minis club. I'm getting five 20 gram DK minis each month. It is knit corner to corner. I have passed the widest point and it is getting smaller again when I remember to do the decreases, which there have been times I've been like knitting on a Zoom call and realized the whole time I was not doing decreases and now my blanket was going out again. Oops. I have started, this is July. July is the greens. I think it's one. Oops, caught a thread there. Ooh. That was just one ply pulled out. Where is my stitch marker? I think this is where we were when I talked about it last. So one, two, three, four, five. I think I'm up to five. Anyway, greens, blues to greens. I did, I finished the greens and I am in yellows. Haha, -ha, that's what we're doing. So this color and now this color, those two. This kind of greeny one and then this one, that to me looks like pear jelly beans. And then it's yellows going into autumn colors. September's, September's colors go from gold into rust. October's colors kind of rusty red into a paler pink. So these greens and golds and the oranges aren't really my colors, but the whole thing together looks amazing. Like I would have said, I don't like, I mean, this isn't my orange, but it's just part of something so beautiful as a whole. I, I can't get over this. I am so in love with this blanket. I just need to close my boxes back up so the yarn doesn't escape. I'm trying to take a picture every month of the yarns in the box so I can see the order because there have been times that my children have gotten to the box and one of them in particular, she's four, really likes playing with the colors and then I don't know what order they're in. I had to email Helen at the beginning to be like, what order were they in? I don't know. At least since then, you can kind of follow, you know, like the colors blend from one to the next. So you need to get from the last set of colors to whatever your next set of colors are going to be. And you can work it out. But that first one, I was just like, I, I have nothing. I don't know what order to put them in. I love this so much. Helen did say she was going to announce next year's clubs soon. That's all my 
finished objects and my works in progress. I do have some acquisitions. I'm just going to blow through them real quick. I went to Glasgow School of Yarn. I went down with one of my friends on the train. It was three and a half hours, except it wound up being four hours because we got to our connection. We were on the train going to Edinburgh and we got the connection to go to Glasgow and they didn't hold our train. We got off the train and I was like, oh, I didn't, you know, I, I don't know if they did announce it or, but I didn't catch which platform we go to for the train to Glasgow. I asked a woman who was working there and she gave me this look like it's over there, but you're going to miss it. And sure enough, we went up the stairs, over the tracks, down the stairs, and the train pulled away before we could get on it. So they didn't hold the train and we had to wait half an hour for the next train. So we were half an hour later than expected getting into Glasgow. We didn't even get there till noon. But I got Little Grey Girl in one of her new... It's a bucket bag. I can't remember if it's a TARDIS bucket bag or what this particular size is called. Look, look at this gorgeous fabric. Oh my goodness. Love it. That has this month's A Year of Techniques project in it, but I've barely started and we've got lots to talk about, so I'm not going to go into it. This is an extant The Little Grey Girl bag that I've had that I have put acquisition yarn into. Those are three skeins of Ockham from Black Isle Yarns, which is a sport weight, um, now I'm trying to think, there's worsted plied and there, worsted spun and woolen spun. This is the fuzzy one, which is woolen spun. Woolen spun, sport weight from local sheep in the Black Isle. Black Isle is really close to where I live in Inverness. These are dyed with natural things and I got it as a kit. Black Isle yarns. That's a map. The dot is Inverness. That's where I live. And then all these little are where the sheep live. That fits water. Sheep. Inverness. The map is switched around, so that's why I'm having trouble looking at it. Uh, undyed, damson, Heather, Dark Indigo. I got two kits of the same yarn to get the colors I want to knit two hats. Hats again. One for me, um, which is one of the hats in the perspective book that Black Isle Yarns put out based on using this yarn, which is the pattern that Julie, Julia of Black Isle Yarns did, and it's a cute snowy scene. And then a hat from Anne Caitlin Begg's catnip book. I should have brought the books with, but that's a hat for Christina, uh, my eight-year-old. And then the snow hat one is for me. And then with the leftover yarn, I'm hoping to get a pair of mittens, the ones from the perspective book that are supposed to be really comfortable and warm. And I'm hoping this year is the year I can wear mittens when out in the snow with my children and they don't need to hold my their bare fingers against my bare fingers when we're walking. I think I'm, I think we're ready for to wear mittens. I've been wearing like I showed you the ones with the fold down mitts that you can put the hand in and have it stick over their hand and anyway this year mittens for extra warmth. My other one I got some of the sock kiln sock 
I bought the Old Blend and knit a pair of socks and they are so soft and cozy and comfy and they were a bit thick and thin and one of the thin places was right under my heel and it snapped so I need to darn that hole. They're bed socks not walking around socks is basically what that is. I got some minis from Giddy Yarns. If you've been watching for a while you'll know I've been collecting all the rainbow. I think orange is the only color I still need now that I have gray in the hopes of doing a beautiful rainbow crochet blanket in the different colored minis. And I was thinking the gray would make a nice border if it's enough. I mean, just like an I-cord knot. Anyway, we'll see how big the blanket is and if this is enough. And if not, then there are other gray yarns and or other uses for this gray yarn. And also from Giddy Yarns, I got Chaotic Cauldron, which has a thick gray stripe and then the oranges, the greens, and the purples. I cast these on. It was still October, I cast them on, and then I thought I'll just set them aside for next year and work on Christmas socks. So I uncast these on which is why the tag isn't on it anymore. And that's when I cast on the Yuletide socks instead. A bag of minis from Hey Mama Knits, My Mama Knits. I did their advent calendar a few years ago. The colors were not all for me, but otherwise, you know, I, the advent calendar is fine. It just wound up having a lot of browns and dark greens and earthy tones that are not my preference. Two bags of Bob and Minis from Penny Penny Makes. I just got attacked by a fly. Uh, I have been collecting, I'll put those down because they crinkle. I have been collecting her Bob and Minis. She did a Bob and Minnie club. She did a color club that included Bob and Minis over the summer or over the past year. And I have been getting them all and I just need some more colors to fill out. I want to do a different rainbow mini blanket that I have cast on a couple of times, worked on a bit, and then, I mean, it's the pink yarns so that were the first month. I have knit them several times and frogged them several times as I have different ideas of what to do with them. That's fine. Uh, and then I also bought this game because this is kind of my platonic ideal green. It is coming out a little darker on the screen than it is in person. Um, it's not quite as teal. It's a little more green, but it is a very teal toned green. So I bought this. Uh, she does a lot of dyed to order. So I can order this when I'm ready to have a green jumper. Although I have a sweater quantity of this yarn in a blue green that's very pretty, so it might be a while. I picked up some needles, some more snippy snips, and because my friend and I weren't sure how trains would work out for getting there on time, we did get the all day entry, which came with the bag. This mini from Dystopic Yarns and some traffic cone stitch markers. If you are familiar with Glasgow, you will know that traffic cone has significance, which is also why it's on the back there. I also got the, the Lush, the bright pink that I showed you, the pink orange yarn from Ripples Crafts is also from Glasgow School of Yarn. Just checking if my hair is dry. I don't think, oh, well, it's pretty dry about as dry as I can ever hope for it to get within the same day that I've washed it. That's kind of, just get that one out of, in front of my eyes. That's kind of it for the yarny content. I mentioned my sewing, my other sewing, my jumper's falling off again. I normally have a shawl pin, but I took it off last night like a shawl pin that's just with the shawl. And then I didn't have it today. 
when putting my shawl on. Life stuff. So yeah, we had a half term break. Both my kids had a cold. Going into half term break with really bad coughing, my four year old's teacher was off. Um, her primary nursery teacher was off. It's a bunch of teachers, a bunch of kids. Each teacher has several children as their specific primary. They do special, you know, they write all the stuff down in their, their log books. Uh, her primary teacher was off the last week of school with a chest infection. Catherine, my four-year-old, has been coughing a lot. Uh, my eight-year-old Christina wound up being off. She should have been off the Thursday and the Friday, but um, she stayed home the Friday before half-term break with a really bad cough. And I didn't let her go to her final trampoline tryout day, but she got in anyway. So yay, she's in the trampoline club. Um, and then after half-term break, when it started up again, one of the kids from her class was also in, was trying, was now trying out for the trampoline club. And Christina was really happy to see someone she knew, someone her own age, because the other kids are all older. Um, I know there's like a P7 who had tried out at the same time who goes to their school. Uh, so that was, it was really, like, they were very happy to see each other, even though they're not friends at all. Like they've never played together. Um, yeah, they 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 were happy to see each other and they're like, yay, my buddy, which I like. I like when you have to make friends with someone who wouldn't necessarily be your first choice because you're in other situations where they then become the familiar face. I think like that kind of being able to make new friends is a good skill to have. Uh, and I like the mom, so that worked out well. Uh, though it turns out that that particular child's younger sibling on the following Monday, that was Thursday, on the following Monday was one of the kids with the coronavirus. No symptoms as of that time. Um, the whole school wound up having to shut down for a week. And the the older sibling who was in the trampoline class has tested non negative for coronavirus, so it wasn't really a concern. But I did not let my child go to trampoline the following week because... The school was closed down. There were over 50 cases at the school. It was, I'm, most of the reason the school was shut down was because enough teachers were off that they couldn't run the classes. But there were three classes that had outbreaks. And I was just like, you know what? We're gonna stay home. We're just not gonna be part of this problem. We're not gonna go out. We're gonna make sure we are not a point of contagion for anyone else. Um, so that's another week of trampolining. She's missed, and now she's coughing again, so I'm looking at her like, I'm not sure going to trampolining is a great idea. Mm. I am now coughing. Like I said, I was not coughing the f during half term when everybody else was, but I did feel absolutely awful. I was really glad I felt better in time for Glasgow School of Yarn. I had tested negative for coronavirus, obviously. I did test before I went, um, wore masks on the tr Wore masks on the train the whole time, wore masks at the venue the whole time, wore masks walking around Glasgow the whole time. It was a lot of masks. It was masks that matched my, my knit bag, so that was cute. Although I didn't have my knit bag out, so it was just had to be cute on its own. Um, yeah, the coronavirus at the school is just... I got an email today saying someone in my older girl's class has now tested positive for coronavirus, but they don't think it's a point of contact for anyone else. So I'm guessing it's probably the other kid whose younger sibling had it. And since I happen to know that that child had been staying home as well, most likely got it from their sibling because that's what happens. That's, I mean, like if one of, if any one of us in the family, unless it's Chris, my husband, who can effectively isolate, like we can put him in his room and, you know, like everybody stay out of the way and, I'm, you know, that kind of stuff, not come out tell the kids they're not allowed to go in like unless it's Chris we're all the rest of us just gonna spread it around um because I don't think I can get the kids to isolate or to isolate away from me that is absolutely not a thing that will happen uh I wasn't able to do my running over the two weeks of Glasgow of Glasgow School of Yarn two weeks of Glasgow School of Yarn would have been really nice 
I wasn't able to do my running over the two weeks of half term. I'd gotten up to week, I'd finished week seven, which is three 25 minute runs over the course of the week, plus warm up and cool down. Um, those were, they were getting hard. It was, I mean, the running was a lot of running. I was definitely feeling it while running. After, like when the running was over, I'd be like, oh, I feel light and fresh and like I could keep going all week. Um, so I hadn't been able to run over the two weeks. So when I restarted, I restarted with week six, which has a couple of smaller runs. And then on the Friday, for me, doing the three days, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, the third run is the 25 minute run. Um, and then the following Monday, I did the week seven, started week seven with the 25 minute run. And that was fine. My ankles, um, I have an Achilles tendon injury that flares up sometimes and it was feeling just a little a little stiff and sore so that night before bed I did my ankle um I have a whole series of ankle and leg stretches exercise strengthening things that I learned back when I was dancing I did those and my ankle went, oh didn't like that at all and then flared up so I have like I couldn't walk on it for a week and then the following week was when my children were home because the coronavirus flare up at the school outbreak. Also, I came down with the cold. So I wasn't going to be running even if my kids weren't there because I have felt terrible. I hope I'm looking at the camera because I feel like I'm just gazing off into the distance because I'm not making eye contact. So I'm looking like I'm pretty sure I was actually looking at the spider plant, which is on the floor. Well, it's not on the floor. It's on the it's hanging down. I'm pretty sure I'm actually looking at the spider plant instead of the camera. Is it better? to look at myself and not be looking at the camera. Looking at the camera obviously is ideal. Letting my gaze just travel anywhere. I'm sorry. Because I'm not making eye contact, it is hard for me to look at the camera. I have a bear sticker there that I'm supposed to be looking at. I don't know, I'll try to get used to this. I'm really, I am trying and I am aware I'm not doing a great job. Hopefully in two weeks I will be feeling better and I will have knitting to show you one or the other at least. Uh, I went for a walk today on the way home from school and I was so tired not like gasping for breath but just like my muscles were just like Ugh. and I'm like I've only been on a three minute walk. I used to, not that long ago I was running for 25 minutes and now I can't even walk for five minutes without being like all trembly and weak and I think it's just because I'm not getting enough oxygen and it, my muscles are complaining. Anyway, I hope you are doing well. I hope you don't have the cold. I hope you don't mind that I don't make eye contact with the screen anymore, ever, anywhere, ever, despite my best efforts. <laughs> Thank you for watching and I will talk to you in a couple of weeks. Bye.